Hey guys, um, little addendum to Acts chapter 5, um, just to elucidate on something. This is pretty interesting when you stop to think about it. Uh, we'll start at 33. And like I said, watch um, Acts chapter 5 of the B video, at least before you watch this one. But 33 says, when they had heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to the men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For about these days, Theatus rose up claiming to be somebody. And a number of men, about 400, joined them. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people. After him, he too perished. And we all who all followed him were scattered. In the present case, uh, from these men, I tell you, let them alone, for it is a plan to undertake a man, it will fail. But if it's from God, um, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might have found yourself opposing God. Um, and what are they doing? Verse 42, to preach in Jesus as the Christ. So the point is, the apostles are following someone. They're following someone named Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, or Jesus the Christ, however you want to phrase it. And what Galileo does is he compares them to these two men. He compares Jesus to Theatus, and he compares him to Judas the Galilean. So we'll just pull them up real quick on Wiki just to touch um, some of this stuff here. And this is what they have on Wiki about this. Um, Theatus was uh, died about 46 AD, apparently. He was a Jewish rebel of the first century AD. His name if a Greek compound may mean gift of God, although other scholars believe that it's Semitic and might follow flowing of the water. At some point between 44 and 46, the Addis led his followers on a short-lived revolt. The principal source in history for this is Josephus. And he writes, it came to pass while Cuspius Faudus was procreator of Judea, then a certain charlatan whose name was Theatus presided, persuaded a great part of the people to take their effects with them and follow him to the Jordan River, for he told them he was a prophet, and, and that he would by his own command divide the river, and afforded them an easy passage over it. Many were deluded by his words, however, Faddis did not prevent them to take any advantage of this wild attempt but sent a troop of horsemen out against them after falling upon them unexpectedly they slew many of them and took many of them alive they also took the Addis alive cut off his head and carried it to jerusalem and this is from jewish antiquities 20.97 to 98. the movement was dispersed and never heard from again josephus does not provide number of the Addis followers but the Acts of the Apostles, it is referring to the same Theatus, reports that they numbered about 400. The ease with which they were overcome suggests they were unarmed, unlike many other messianic insurgents of the period. Some writers have the opinion that he may have been said that he was the Messiah. Okay, so that that's a, who Theatus is. Okay, he's a guy led a, uh, people to cross a river, claiming he was a prophet, and may have been claiming that he was the actual Messiah. They come down with the soldiers and they kill a bunch of them, behead him, and bring his head back. The other guy is Judas of Galilee, also known as Judas of Gamala led a violent resistance to the census imposed for Roman tax purposes by Quirinius in Ludia province around 6 AD. The revolt was crushed brutally by the Romans. These events are discussed by Josephus in the Jewish Wars and Antiquities of the Jews. In Antiquities of the Jews, Josephus states that Judas, along with the Zadok, the Pharisee, founded the fourth sect, a first century of uh, first century Judaism for the first three of Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes. Josephus blames this sect, usually identified with later zealots, a group of theocratic nationalists who preached that God alone was the ruler of Israel. 
and later urged that no taxes should be paid to Rome for the great Jewish revolt and the destruction of Herod's temple. Josephus does not relate the death of Judas, although he does report that Judas' son named James and Sim Simon were executed by the procreator Tiberius Julius, Julius Alexander in about 46 AD. He also reports that Menahem, one of the early leaders of the Jewish revolt in AD 66, was Judas' son, but most scholars doubt this. Menahem may have been Judas' grandson, however, Menahem's cousin, Elizer ben Yair, uh, then escaped the fortress of Masada, and blah, 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 blah. Judas is mentioned in the New Testament book, Acts of the Apostles. The author has Gamaliel, a member of the Sanhedrin, describe him as an example of a failed messianic leader. This appears to be an error since it refers to the revolt of Theatus, and actually take place for 10 years, as happened before, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the point is if you look up these two guys, Judas of Galilee and Theodatus, Theodatus, and we go back to Acts chapter 5, this tells you what everyone thought about him. All right. Gamaliel thought Jesus was just another one of these messianic prophets, one of these people claiming to be someone. And to me, that's the biggest phrase to hold on to in all of this because it is that is exactly what he's he's saying about them they're claiming to be somebody in verse 35 claiming to be somebody that claimant did not you notice he ain't, he's not comparing him to god he's not comparing him he, he's comparing jesus to two failed messianic character types who claim that they were somebody and I think this that's really worth pointing out and just clinging on to. They they put Jesus in this category based on what the apostles were saying. See, that's what's interesting about one, two, three, four, and five and Acts. This based on what the apostles were saying. Gamaliel just chalked it up. This is another messianic candidate. And the thing, you know, that was unique that really threw him off, I think, in the end, is the fact that he died the way he died. He didn't start a military uprising and, and all like these other people had attempted. But that goes to show you what Galileo, Gamaliel thought about this cat, is that he was just another messianic candidate, another person trying to deliver the Jewish people from their suffering. This was based on the apostles' teaching, and it was the, it's the apostles' words that actually make you think this way. So I just want to go into a little bit more detail about that. And no one tries to correct him. No one, you know, Jesus is the correct Jesus as the Messiah, verse 42. They're preaching Jesus as the Messiah. And Gamaliel compares him to these two other messiahs that failed ultimately. So that really goes to show you what they were saying about Jesus. And I'm I'm not talking about Gamaliel, I'm talking about the apostles. The mere fact the apostles let him go around comparing him to these failed messianic candidates when they should have been correcting him saying no 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 he wasn't a messianic candidate he was god but they don't do that they're saying no he is the messiah wait and see you'll see by the the deeds and the acts and the mirror you're gonna see that jesus is the messiah that's what their point was not that jesus was god that was not the point that was not the argument and gamaliel did not take it that way so just a little something on that, but um, I hope that uh, gives you some food for thought. All right. God bless.